Last week, after a long and painful trek, we made it. We finally made it. This week, I thought that trek would continue. But to put it lightly, King B-Dogs, <laughs> to put it lightly, I don't... The snapshot, it doesn't exist anymore. Today is indeed Wednesday, but it is definitely not snapshot day. However, as a small consolation prize, the developers have bestowed upon us my sweet princess. Look at her eyes. Her eyes glisten in the sunlight up here atop the mountain. Her eyes, her beautiful eyes. And her chest. Wait, what big beta day? Welcome to Bedrock Beta 1.18.30.29. Today we're going to dive into it. Check it out. It's must leave a like March, so yeah. And tomorrow, it looks like it's going to be snapshot day. Definitely subscribe for them. Right now, as a Java player, even though we got like the best snapshot last week, I'm feeling like that small dog meme and the Bedrock Edition is the gigantic dog because this beta, it's a good beta. Inside of this beta, we have some deep dark changes or I guess I should say additions. LA changes, chest boat. Oh my gosh, chest boat. There's a lot here. So today, let's begin under the ground because we have a gigantic brand new addition to Minecraft's underground, huh? Bedrock Edition. Look at this place. The deep dark biome has finally made it and this deep dark biome is basically the best deep dark biome that I have ever seen. This cave is gigantic. It's a massive cavern and the deep dark. It's all over the place. The latest bedrock beta has implemented the deep dark biome. No ancient city, no warden unfortunately, but this biome. Like look at this place. I know it's dark right now, but that's the point of the biome. Duh. All right, but fair point, the point of the video is to see the biome, so night vision, look at this place, this is amazing, this beautiful, beautiful, perfect biome. Now this version of the deep dark, to me, it's looking pretty similar to last week's Java snapshot version of the deep dark, like skulk all over the place, and not the experimental version. So obviously, the, the obvious thing about the deep dark biome is going to be skulk, you're going to have a skulk all over the place. Inside of this biome on the surface, you'll find catalysts, you'll find the sensors, you'll find the shriekers. One thing that you won't find inside of this snapshot is the warden, so there's really like no challenge to this place quite yet because mobs don't exist here either. We're not gonna talk about this biome too much in today's video because we've kind of already talked about it a lot, including literally on Monday, I just dropped a video on the deep dark biome. Long story short, this place is interesting. It's really, really cool. And if you wanna know more about it, just check out Monday's video. It'll be on the end card. However, one thing that I would like to mention about the deep dark biome on Bedrock Edition is uh, locating it. Locating it might be a little bit tricky because the locate biome command doesn't exist on Bedrock Edition. How I actually located this deep dark biome started with Java Edition. So I started in Java Snapshot 22W11A, created a world, locate biome deep dark on Java Edition. Then all I did is I took that seed, copied it, pasted it over on Bedrock Edition, the latest beta, and then teleported myself to those coordinates. So if you have Java Edition, but you like mainly play Bedrock, you want to check it out there. That's how I would recommend finding the biome. If you don't have Java Edition and you still want to find the Deep Dark, well, it's going to be tricky. But one spot you could consider starting is dry areas with a lot of mountains. By dry, I'm talking like an area far away from an ocean. And then by a lot of mountains, I'm like literally talking a, a lot of mountains. Like this area right here, this is right above where the Deep Dark biome is. It's right down there. A uh, gigantic mountain right there, really, really good looking. No gigantic oceans, like too close. It looks like there might be one over there, but then even more mountains. Your best bet would be teleport to one of these locations, dig straight down. Deep dark usually generates deep. Maybe it'll work. Next up, I've waited for this moment. You've waited for this moment for a long time. To be honest, this felt like 10 long, excruciatingly long, drawn out years, but it's here. This moment can't be taken from us any longer. No more delays or anything like that. Check this out, six brand new items, seven coming very soon with the mangrove one, I'm sure, I'm sure, but today we have six. Six, no less. The gang is all here, officially. Oak chest boat, spruce chest boat, birch chest boat, jungle one, acacia one, dark oak one as well. The gang is quite literally all here. And if I do say so myself, it started with the skulk stuff, moved over to the frog, the frog light, continues with the chest boat. This model, this is a good looking chest boat. In fact, the only complaint I have about this name is its terribly non-intuitive name. A dark oak boat with chest. I mean, I don't know. You be the judge, but I feel like chest boat just has a nice roll. It rolls right off the tongue. Chest boat, dark oak. Seems like it could be a lot easier than this one, but I don't know.
I mean, you know what they say, why use less words when more do trick, right? Uh, yeah, something like that. So anyways, instead of the boat rowing, it's literally exactly the same as a normal boat. If you play Java and you row boats a lot, then this looks a little bit different, but it's basically just Bedrock's animation. It's different. And first person looking around looks basically the same as well. You can look down and see the chest. That's kind of cool. Let's say I was sailing around and then my friend's chest boat randomly appeared. If I use this chest boat to try and, you know, like maybe rob from it, I actually jump over to the chest boat. I want mine back. Mine was a little bit better, so there we go. If we crouch in the chest boat, we get out of the chest boat. That's how that works. If we use the chest boat and then use the inventory, we get the inventory of the chest boat. So E is checking my inventory right now. That's pretty cool. Not bad. Now let's say we're outside of the chest boat, though. How do we actually access the chest? If I just aim at the chest, do I get it? Well, uh, no. You just get in. Let's check this out in survival. That's probably how you'll be doing it. So same thing. If I use the chest boat, I get in. If I crouch, I get out. If I crouch and use the chest boat and I aim at the chest, then I seem to open up the inventory sometimes. It's a little bit strange. One thing that I did notice is you can actually get into the boat farther away than you can actually access the inventory. I mean, maybe that kind of makes sense. I don't know. It could just be a little bit strange or something. But yeah, so that's how that works. Now, let's say I actually broke chest boat. If I use my axe, I know, despicable monster, I use this and break chest boat, what happens? Well, they fall apart. Now to craft chest boat, insanely, insanely simple. We go to the crafting table, boat, and the chests are pretty predictable. That's how that works. What if I make a doubled chest boat? So like I take two chests and put it inside of the boat. It doesn't work. So that one was from this long thread that I put out when I started to work on this video. We're going to test out a couple different chest boat things. If you tweeted me one of these suggestions, big shout out to you. And also, if you're me, big shout out because Hopper's chest boat, that was my first idea. As soon as I heard of chest boat a couple years ago, I started wondering about Hopper's. But before we talk about Hopper's, let's talk about this. There's a mob inside of my boat. Can I get inside of it? No. If I use the boat and I'm not crouching and I'm aimed like correctly or whatever, it seems kind of weird, then I actually can open the inventory. If I'm not aiming correctly, like I guess all of these spots right here and I'm using it, then I don't get the chest. But if I crouch, then I can get the chest. Uh, somehow I can get the chest. Okay, admittedly, the targeting seems a little bit strange right now. Maybe it is just Bedrock Edition or something like that. But yeah, if a mob's inside of the boat, then you too cannot get inside of the boat. Now, let's go ahead and use this boat over here and put things inside of it. We'll put, I don't know, my elytra, my turtle shell, this glass bottle. Then we get in the boat and move it over to the hopper. Watch what happens. This is amazing. So here we go. We stop there. It works. This thing interacts with hoppers. The things inside of the chest boat are moved outside of the chest boat, picked up by the hoppers, and moved over. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. You could go exploring with your chest boat early game, bring it back over, make a hopper, sail the boat over the hopper, and then just let the hopper do the work. You could have an item sorter or something like that. It's portable inventory storage. Like, of course, I sail around. I find this rose bush right here. I, I take it. I put it inside of the chest boat. And then I don't even have to put the things inside of the chest boat away. I can just keep them here and sort it automatically. That's huge. So that was one of the biggest questions that I was seeing inside of the thread. A chest boat plus hopper works. How about chest boat plus chest boat? Can we do a chest boat exception? Yes, we definitely can. It seems like basically anything, or at least all of the things that I've tested so far, work inside of chest boat. A shulker box, can we put that inside of a chest boat? Definitely, absolutely. The chest boat is literally just a normal chest inside of a boat. No difference. I had a request to full send the boat off the side of a mountain to see what happens. Like, does the boat break or anything, or is it normal mechanics? So, here goes nothing. Full send off the side of one of the tallest mountains I've ever seen, and... I hurt in better rock edition, but the boat should be fine. Quickly recover the location I was just at. We sent the boat uh, approximately this way down the ravine. We should be able to find the boat just sitting on the ground somewhere uh, over here. Mm, there it is. There it is. It's in the tree. Boat tree right there. The boat is fine, but I wasn't. So that's cool. Leads. What about leads? Do leads work with chest boat? So on Bedrock Edition, you can actually connect a lead to a boat. Kind of interesting. And yeah, you can definitely lead a chest boat on Bedrock as well. You can pull it, put a lead on it, just like normal. And uh, also, let's expand that experiment to chest boat with the mob inside of it and the lead. Can we do that? Yes, we can. That is not too heavy. We can still pull the boat around. Looks absolutely terrible if I say so myself, but it works. There was a great question about crafting the boat. So obviously, as we saw, we crafted it like that. That works. What about like an ender chest? It's kind of the same. Nope, doesn't work. How about a shulker box? Nope, that doesn't work either. That would be really cool though. Uh, or a barrel. Nope, 
all of those don't work. You will literally need the normal plain old chest. Now that I think about it, there is another type of chest, the trapped chest. Does that work? That does not work either. What happens when we have chest boat with items inside of it and then I break the chest boat? Where do the items go? Do they drop on the ground or what? Are they gone forever? Well, the items, uh, kind of predictably here, whenever I break this thing, the items are just going to be thrown out all over the place. So I guess that's another way to quickly unload these things too. I had a lot of questions about frog in a chest boat. I'm not going to say I fully understand these questions, but I do sympathize with the questions. They are valid, so frog inside of the chest boat. Here they all are. It's a frog army, a frog fleet, you could even say, led by the disgusting cow. Can't even look straight. And then finally, parrot plus chest boat, or I guess parrot plus me plus chest boat. Does it work? It does. You can definitely have a parrot sitting on you and sail the chest boat. The chest boat is absolutely amazing, really, really cool. The hopper functionality makes this thing potentially very, very useful. I'm excited about it. I like it a lot. If you asked a question on the thread for the video or are just part of Twitter gang in general, thank you. Next up, let's talk about the LA. We have some minor adjustments to this thing in this beta. So LA, there we go, that exists and it looks the same. This time we'll give it the spore blossom and have it pick it up. Look at how it holds it. It holds it like pretty much perfectly. Very underappreciated item if I say so myself. Uh, so anyways, I dropped some. Uh, let's see what the LA does. It flies around, picked some up or maybe picked one up. And it's flying around, it's picking them up. And then it should bring it over to me. Yep, that's good. Now, uh, the change here, it has to do with the note block. So if we have the note block ringing, the LA should stay closer to it, according to the change log. I, I don't know. Uh, so let's say we have Swore Blossom over here. Will you pick that up? Mm, yeah, you pick that up. And you're going to take it to the note block, right? Yep, yep, yep. Anyways, let's turn that off. That's annoying. Now I have a sword and I'm trying to attack the LA. Nothing happens. So this is good. This is really, really nice. If the LA has an item, you cannot accidentally hurt the LA. If I take the item away and swing at it, oh man, I'm a monster. It goes away. The change is pretty straightforward here. If the LA has an item, the owner of that LA won't be able to hurt it. That's great. Now we have a change with LA item collection. Previously, LA's were able to pick up a variety of items. Uh, like meaning, let's say it had a wool block, it would be able to pick up any color of wool. I think that was kind of weird. The developers apparently agreed. Now the LA will only pick up the exact item that it's holding. So orange wool if it has orange wool, green wool if it's green wool, clear glass if it's clear glass. And then according to the changelog, the LA also now has a delay for picking up and returning items. I mean, I don't know. This seems to be pretty much the same. Gave the items back. I mean, maybe that's like the delay right there. It's flying around. It's not like doing it right away, maybe. Kind of an interesting idea there. It seems to be slowed down a little bit. Don't know why they would do that. So those are the alley changes in this week's beta. My initial thoughts with minimal testing, I feel like they all make sense, uh, other than the delay thing. The delay thing, I don't know, it seems like an unnecessary nerf to the LA. Maybe there's a reason for it or something like that. But the LA, from my testing, is already kind of like, you know, unpredictable, moves around randomly. Why slow it down? The no damage thing, I would actually take that one step farther. I would argue that when the LA has an item, because it is so relatively rare, it's just immune. Like, nothing can hurt it at all, even pillagers. Like, it's perfectly safe if it has an item. The corrections. In last week's beta video, I got a couple things wrong. Sorry about that. Correction number one, it's actually surprisingly not confirmed to be in the wild update. According to Hendrik, one of the developers, they're still testing these features. The goat horn, the copper horn stuff, it might not make it into 1.19. They're just ideas at this point. And then we have the sound thing. I said there were 20 total sounds. Uh, one sound for each copper horn, one sound for each goat horn. Kind of cool. Uh, well, that's where I was wrong. So check this out. If I use this while I'm standing. <laughs> I get that, whatever that is. If I use it while I'm crouching. Uh-huh, as you can see, it's different. And then if I look up and use it. Interesting. If I combine all three, I get a masterpiece, if I say so myself. So I had it wrong. Uh, there are actually three sounds for each copper horn. Don't know how I messed that one up. Sorry about that. I still really think these horns are an interesting concept, but I also still fully believe there needs to be an item or a way that you could actually use these things in single player. As somebody who mainly plays single player, I would quite literally never get to hear these horns if I had an item or at least maybe a like a dispenser functionality where I could hear these things that could be cool. And then considering the fact that there are three different sounds for each item, a dispenser machine or something that could use these at the same time, you know, hear the actual song in game could be cool.
Finally, for this week's beta, we have a parity change that I think actually came a little bit earlier, but but anyways, axes that attack a shield will disable the shield for 5 seconds. That's how it works on Java, it works like that on Bedrock too now. When it comes to technical changes, bug fixes in the beta, this is what we're looking at right here, but other than that, that's gonna just about do it for Bedrock Beta 1.18.30. Point 29. What do you think about dispensers potentially being able to use goat horns? Do you like that idea, or do you think a different block should do them? Let me know your thoughts on that and everything else in this beta down below. Conveniently on your way down there, I placed the like button right below this video so you can make a quick stop at that. I would appreciate it a huge time, and it looks like snapshot day tomorrow, so subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's been me, your boy. Goodbye.